So with that, we are going to get into a conversation about procurement. Uh, I met Sarah Keller a few uh, weeks back, it's been about a month now, um, at the Oracle conference, Oracle Cloud World conference, actually. And I was immediately impressed, impressed and floored by her depth of knowledge. I think Sarah's been at this for about seven plus years. Uh, they work across multiple clouds. I think they've got four cloud providers. And Sarah, looking forward to hearing a little bit more about your journey and what you're doing at Uber. Over to you. Thanks, JR. And welcome myself being to the FinOps community. I'm super excited to meet all of you and to be a part of today's presentation. Uh, next. So just a little bit about me quickly. Um, yes, I've had an opportunity to work at cloud companies and since probably about 2013, have been negotiating with cloud companies. My first start with uh, AWS. Um, so I saw the kind of emergence as AWS developed their tools, particularly around the FinOps practice, uh, starting from that time, GCP 2016. Azure got heavier into that around 2019, and then OCI negotiations as of 2022. So in this mindset, I feel pretty comfortable in saying that I can talk about the procurement track for all of our major cloud providers. And wanted to bring this maybe home to the FinOps community in a way maybe that you don't see. Let's call it the silent heroes, hopefully helping many of you as you're going through your cloud journey. But if you hit next, please and maybe one more click, there you go. So if we're taking the FinOps phases and kind of talking about how procurement fits into this, I have obviously kind of taken where your inform is and started to look at it from our side of the house. So the first phase of the FinOps journey is about empowering the organization. Procurement is all about that. We have to create structures that enable your practitioners, your engineers to understand what's happening from the cloud baseline but in some companies, you've developed and you've started in a cloud. So you may not begin with a request for proposal, but the days of companies that were just single threaded to a single cloud are becoming far fewer. Many companies have to go through a multi-cloud journey or consideration on a product workload by product workload basis. So in many cases, request for proposal is a clean way of how organizing data across a multi-cloud viewpoint. There's also contracting. Um, yes, many of these companies do have online terms. Those terms do require that you pretty well sign up for them. They're not easily negotiated, but there are very specific product terms and conditions that you can actually do something with, particularly if you've developed it. And then there are internal processes for compliance. I think this is one of the more understated um, issues that happen, particularly for multinational companies or any company that has to go through audits. Many of the processes that are enabling of cloud, including how you use your portal to sign up for things, are actual violations of policies of control. How Who is signing? What is happening? Those processes in and of themselves do not necessarily break a company, but you have to create a translation engine. People who are in accounting don't understand FinOps as a baseline. So your procurement partner is your friend in making those contractions and those controls happen. Next, under optimize, obviously, again, organizations are empowered and they're looking at how can they make their costs better. Um, there is a lot that can happen related to commitments. Obviously, people understand your reservations create a commitment structure for you, but there are obviously enterprise discount programs and minimum commit structures you can put in place with any cloud company. And some of those lines are fairly low. Um, you can have a million dollars of spend and start getting cross-service discounts or product level discounts. Um, you do need to obviously have some ability to look at how the auditors, again, would think about this. So again, thinking of those reservations, those are commitments. How do you track those? How do you manage those? Become incredibly important. And then SLA product level refinements. This is a place where, again, I think in that optimize to operate, if you're not tracking the SLAs and you're accounting on your cloud provider to track on that governance side, chances are you're missing massive opportunities related to cost controls. Um, if there's an outage, who's tracking your outage and making sure you're getting a credit back on your bill? And then if you can afford again, JR, under operate, 
a key part of, particularly in a multi-cloud mindset, you have to manage is performance. How do you measure and track what GCP does versus AWS versus Azure? Every one of these companies is a slightly different and how they track and manage things is different. You need to create a strong governance process to be able to bring those workflows together. Invoice audit is the very, very silent killer. And I think this is, if I had to say one thing that JR and team got the most excited about is at Uber, we've done a lot to deal with how we think about our invoices. How many times have you found an error in your cloud build? How many times have you been looking? I would say to you, and I, and I make no offense to our cloud partners, many of the times the systems that they use to build up the backend invoicing are not fully connected. Those systems in and of themselves can create massive loss on your side. And if you're trusting the information that's just coming straight out of the system, you've missed an opportunity to operate and to really look at refinement. Um, and then on a multi-cloud introduction, Again, many of your products have a stickiness factor or past product stack factor, but there are a lot of services that are actually IaaS or very neutral, or you're using third-party software. So this is also the place where procurement can come back looking at the overall relationship, the product usage, and can start making plays for other cloud partners. Because the environment has become so competitive and aggressive, There are many times where if your company has the ability to move workloads, you can do so and you can save yourself a lot of money by doing it. So while, again, this is intentionally a brief intro onto that procurement roles, um, I would encourage you, if you have a procurement partner, one, involve them in your FinOps process if they are not already. Um, Second, think about some of these other elements because the pieces of the pie that are just related to cost control from the front end have to make sense somewhere on the back end too. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys for inviting me to join you on the summit today. Obviously looking forward to seeing you at the next roadshow. Please let me know if you have any questions. Happy to connect over LinkedIn or on Slack. JR here from the FinOps Foundation. Thank you for watching. Please go to FinOps.org if you want to get plugged into this amazing community. And of course, hit subscribe right here on YouTube to get all the future content. Hope to see you soon.